Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO. Free, impartial advice on all your debt. This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. With me is the man himself, Mr. Gareth A. Davis. How are we doing, Gareth? Very well, thank you. Obviously, loads of fallout this week on uh, Daniel Dubois and Joe Joyce. It's, it's the talk of the town, it really is. Are you surprised by how much uh, attention it gathered before the fight and now after? Yeah, it was a really big fight, Umar. It was, you know, we talked about it, you know, in the build-up last week with Andy Lee and Ben Davison, which I thoroughly enjoyed being a part of. Those two are brilliant uh, breakers down of a fight. Um, they're fantastic people to work with. They always have been. Um, and I think, you know, um, the fight itself was fascinating. It was intriguing. It was difficult to score at times. Um, you know, I had Dubois around ahead going into that 10th round. Other people had um, uh, Joe Joyce ahead by round. It was a very close fight. But he won it, as you said to me before we started recording, I'll give you credit for this, uh, he won it with one hand. I mean, he, he used that, that left jab of his to massive perfection. And we haven't seen him box with a jab like that before. It was a brilliant game plan executed to perfection. Um, the fallout doesn't surprise me. I mean, you know, boxing can be a very cruel sport at times. And, and you know, the Q word came into effect, of course, you know, that he was a dog, he was a quitter, all these things. Um, I don't have that mindset myself. I, mean, I think, you know, we don't know the pain he was going through. I felt that at the time. Um, and, you know, he lives to fight another day. And who knows um, if he'd taken more punches to that eye, whether he would ever have boxed again. You know, he might have won the fight, but he might never have boxed again. So it's a very difficult thing to assuage, to, 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 to verify when you're not the person taking those blows. And I think empathy is a very important thing in, in, in all things, but particularly in fight sports. And I think the 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 reach exacerbated by people's views on social media and knee-jerk reaction created a lot of heat and a lot of steam around it and you know Daniel Dubois has got to rebuild now and come back the latest I've heard is that he's having he's had the specialist check it there is eye damage um, there is a broken orbital socket he's getting an extra check to see whether he needs any surgery um, they've got to wait for the swelling to go down. Um, but, you know, ultimately, um, I, I, I'm not sure I would call him a quitter. I just think he, he survived to live another day. And, you know, I was on a call with Frank Warren earlier today, and um, he brought up, obviously, there's the, there's, the, there's the guys who fought on. Wayne Alexander contacted me and said, you know, I fought on with an eye closed. Gary Mason did against Lennox Lewis for several rounds. Danny Williams with his dislocated shoulder knocking out Mark Potter with one arm. But then you look at the other side of it, people like, and Frank mentioned this, um, you know, in a fight he promoted um, uh, Ben and Gerald McClellan uh, and other fights. You know, that there are, there are dangers to fighters. Kel Brook, uh, you know, against um, Golovkin, you know, and, and Errol Spence. Fighters can be really badly affected by broken orbital sockets or damaged orbital sockets. So I hope he recovers fully and he gets himself back together. There's going to be a lot of pressure on him when he comes back. Um, you know, they, they, they're going to have to rebuild him very carefully. Frank Warren also mentioned Amir Khan when he was knocked out by Bradis Prescott. They had to rebuild him and he came back and won a world title. So, you know, it, it's a very, very important time for him. And he is a young talent. And thankfully, because he is so young, you know, he can come back from this. There's another one, Vladimir Klitschko, when he got knocked out um, and came back and reigned for 10 years afterwards. Um, so... You know, it, it's a it's a very knee jerk, jerk reaction to say someone's a quitter, in my view. Mm. I mean, he could have saved his career uh, potentially by going down on that knee on, on Saturday night. Absolutely right. Uh, that, that I couldn't have put it. I mean, I spent five minutes going over that. You said it in five words. 
um, you know, or six words, he could have saved his career. You know, I agree. I completely agree. And the same people giving him backlash now in five years, hopefully when Dubois is back at the top of the sport, they'll be uh, wanting to buy tickets for his fight, probably. Yeah, and, and, and also, of course, you know, people like Dillian White, who's very vehement on social media and, you know, is, has a big following as a result. He's, he's very strong on social media. That's set up for a fight now down the line, isn't it? Dillian White uh, against Daniel Dubois is going to be fireworks when those two meet, and hopefully they do at some point. So what else did you get from the update about Daniel's eye? It's just broken orbital socket, correct? Yeah, damaged orbital socket. Um, they're going to have a second specialist check to, to look at the, uh, the nerve damage um, and whether he actually needs an operation or not. A uh, second specialist will look at that. Obviously, he went to Moorfields Eye Hospital. Um, and, 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 the, and the specialist said his sight could have been affected forever if he'd carried on. That was what Frank... Warren reported today so I'm you know for, for everyone particularly for the man himself he actually made the right decision only he knows I mean it would be amazing wouldn't it to be able to be inside a fighter's head when they're going through that you know um, I, I, I think the calmness of Daniel afterwards was was a thing to behold as well um, you know I think he carried it very well and you know, the other side of it is we've got to give massive credit to, to Joe Joyce. Um, you know, he, he did what he had to do and he did it brilliantly. And, and I expect him to be in a world title fight at some point next year. There is a chance he could fight Alexander Usyk, of course. Um, if, if, the, if it works out that Anthony Joshua vacates the WBO to make the Fury fight happen then we, we may well get Joe Joyce against Alexander Usyk. And again, it's a fantastic fight. So imagine if Joshua beats Pulev, we get Fury v. Joshua and Usyk v. Joyce in 2021. It's possible. It's definitely possible. You know, listen, we could even get Tyson Fury against Deontay Wilder 3 in 2021. That's not resolved yet, as we know. Um, there's no update on that yet over the mediation. So uh, we go into 2021 with so many things wide open. I think we all want to see uh, Tyson Fury against Anthony Joshua, but who knows? It, it, it may not happen yet. Um, I hope it does. Um, and I hope we do get that WBO belt freed up because it, it frankly, um, I think I've said it to you before, Tyson Fury and, um, and Anthony Joshua could fight now with no belts on the line. And I think we'd all know it would be for the undisputed title. They don't, almost don't need the belts. Um, you know, technically they, it wouldn't be the undisputed champion because they wouldn't hold all the belts, but let's just see that fight. You know, let's just see it. You know, they can win the belts back later. But, you know, let's get a winner out of those two. Gareth, if Joe manages to, to get revenge over Usyk next year, if that fight happens, he's right then in the mix for the winner of Fury Joshua, practically. That would be a, a fight we'd be calling for if he can beat Usyk. Yeah, we, did, we said that, didn't we, going into Dubois and Joyce. It was a crossroads fight, a seminal moment, a, a career-defining fight for both men uh, in which they took early undefeated both of them and we knew that there would be ramifications and I think his stock has risen enormously because you know we know that Dubois is a big puncher there's no doubt about it you know um you know there's all the the, the gym rumors about him you know knocking down or knocking out Anthony Joshua um I mean I've never seen the footage of that but you know we 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 know that Joyce can take a massive punch from a very, very dangerous fighter. That's why, you know, I, I mentioned putting him in with Deontay Wilder, Joe Joyce against Deontay Wilder now. I mean, you know, you could see Joe Joyce winning that fight if he got his jab going in that way. He's a massive unit. A juggernaut is the right word to call him because that guy can smash holes in walls. And that's what he did on Saturday night. His stock has risen enormously and he is now, has to be considered... Um, I think, regardless of how you now judge Daniel Dubois as, uh, as one of the formidable fighters in the heavyweight division. Hey, it was nice to see Sam Jones crying as well, wasn't it, afterwards? I think he's done a terrific job. I've got to say that. I think Sam Jones done a terrific job with Joe Joyce. 
he put his cojones on the line and you know sam's a very vocal person he speaks more than joe does for joe doesn't he and you know it's it, it's a terrific um and 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 successful team those two and um as i say joe joyce goes into 2021 with 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 great stock behind him not to forget uh the brain behind not to forget not to forget not to forget not to forget <laughs> to mention the brains behind that operation which is adam morally as well you all know yeah, of course. And the guy behind David Hayes come back a few years ago. And, you know, you could see Adam's um, uh, delight behind the scenes on Saturday night. Look, it was a gamble for them. And it was a gamble for Daniel Dubois. Um, you know, the only person that didn't lose out of it, obviously, was Frank Warren, because he had both fighters, as he does this weekend with Lyndon Arthur and Anthony Yard, a very similar sign for Anthony Yard and a lot of pressure on him because Lyndon Arthur's undefeated and this is his moment if he can find a way of winning this fight he elevates himself in the light heavyweight division um two fights with the likes of Joshua Boazzi a rematch with Anthony Yard even Saul Canelo Alvarez is a guy that could be in the mix with, 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 with those guys because he wants more fights and more challenges at light heavyweight. And if he comes through against Callum Smith um, at the end of the month or, or the, what is it, the 19th, he'll be looking for opponents for 2021 as well. Also, obviously, Ishmael Salas uh, was taken out the ring, uh, taken out the corner because he tested positive for COVID-19. So Stephen Broughton had to head up the corner. And how good was he? Props to Stephen. What a great job he did, keeping him calm in the corner, keeping the game plan going and, and, and following it to, to the latter of how they'd rehearsed it um, in the lead up to this fight in the camp. So, you know, Steve Broughton deserves great praise. And, and, you know, he's a guy that doesn't get talked about very much. This is a great moment for him as well. Yeah, if it was an, an Adam Booth or a McCracken or a Ben Davison in the corner, we'd all be talking about him, wouldn't we? No, I agree. And you, you're right to mention it, you know. And um, I think I mentioned it in my post-fight report for The Telegraph about what a great job he'd done. There was absolute calmness in the corner of Joe Joyce all night. No panicking. You know, he, he, I think he lost five of the first six rounds on my card anyway and that not for one moment with it was their major concern they just stuck to the game plan they knew they wanted to take the fight late I think many of us felt that if Joe took the fight late it could easily become his I mean I saw Daniel Dubois having his best opportunities in the first six rounds and and that's how it played out mm. well it was a, a great night look forward to a, another cracker uh well weekend we've got um Billy Joe back in action on a Friday. Of course, yeah. He had a, you know, another arguably 55-45, 60-40 fight between Anthony Yard and Lyndon Arthur. Yeah, I do. I think it is a, it's a very, very interesting fight. Lyndon Arthur is untested at this level with Yard is a big puncher. I think Anthony Yard's jab is going to be important in this fight as well. Because um, Lyndon Arthur is a very decent boxer. Um, very hard man. Um, he's got hunger in the background. I spoke to him last week on Zoom. He's a terrific man um, with an incredible backstory. Um, you know, and obviously um, boxing in his DNA with, with, with the, the, the family, familial relationships with Zelfa and, and Pat Barrett. And, you know, they're a boxing family. He's got it in the genes. And, and who knows, maybe he's got it in him to, to beat Anthony Yard and, and elevate his career. And as you rightly say, Billy Joe Saunders on Friday night as well. Um, that's a matchroom banner, isn't it? So um, I do favour Billy Joe strongly in that fight. I think he's, he, he, technically, he's probably um, the best boxer we've got in the UK. Um, and I was on a Zoom with him yesterday. He was, he, he was typical Billy Joe Saunders, being a little bit crazy on the Zoom call. I won't go into the details. He was joking. I hope it hasn't been misreported. Um, he was joking around a lot, as ever. Um, but I expect him to win that handily on points against a very tough man, or maybe even a late stoppage against a very tough man in Martin Murray, whom Billy Joe said of yesterday on the Zoom call, Umar, that uh, he probably should have been a two-time world champion. He came very close twice. And um, I don't know about robbery, but he deserved... 
um, to have won a world title already, definitely. And I know Martin personally, known him many years. He's a terrific man. He's one a person who I admire very deeply. I've, I've even visited him at home before, him and his wife, Jem, and, um, and their family. And, and I'll always have a lot of love for Martin, as a, not just as a fighter, but as a human being. He's a genuinely brilliant human being who used to be a terror, used to nick cars, yeah, he told me, but then put them back um, in the morning. It's sometimes dented. He's not proud of any of this, but um, a real reformed character. And as I say, like a, a, a human being whom boxing has, um, has changed. And, you know, him and his wife, Jam, are qualified social workers. And that's what he's going to do when he hangs up the gloves. Well, massive week of boxing. Wednesday, MTK show live on Sky. Yes. Friday night, Saunders Murray on Sky. BT on Saturday night for Yard Arthur and then Box Nation early hours on Saturday, Sunday morning, Errol Spence and Danny Garcia. Yeah, I mean, a massive weekend. I mean, we're going to find out whether Errol Spence as well is um, is recovered after that horrific car crash. Uh, Danny Garcia, terrific technical fighter, fantastic hooker, of course, um, and very powerful with both hands. Errol Spence great erudite technician power as well um um brilliant southie and you know again big test for him and you know if if errol spence comes to this hopefully we'll see the crawford terence crawford fight next year as well if the if the rival uh, promotional parties can come together in america absolutely what a time to be a boxing fan this week Gareth, absolutely thank you very much for your time on ifl tv and i'm sure we'll have a catch up with you soon all right take care it's always a pleasure, Umar. Thank you for rinsing me on this afternoon. <laughs> Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO. Free, impartial advice on all your debt.